Invasion angle. Inversion angle. Hello, everybody. Happy whatever day you're listening to this. Monday we through Sunday, insert. You. We do. We have a really exciting show for you guys this time. Um, we've got uh, a guest on, which will he'll come in kind of uh, after our opening segments, uh, Big Ben Bishop. And we're excited because we're all... Big, big trouble, Ben Bishop. Yeah, yeah big trouble. Go. Big trouble, Ben Bishop. He's big trouble. He's six foot twelve, a thousand pounds, and he's a hero. You know, and, and we are we can't be more grateful because we've only been no showed by every other guest we've tried to get. And <laughs> yeah. It really I mean, just it means a lot though. Haters gonna so, hate. It's gonna be cool. I mean? We can pick his brain a little bit. And there are yeah. only other guests. Uh, we banned from the premises. He yeah. allegedly allegedly could be my brother. Allegedly <laughs> couldn't be my brother. Yeah, we're gonna need a we're gonna need a DNA test. Banned. He yeah. was never even a guest to begin with. So yeah, that's why twenty three. <laughs> He's just a band. All... He's like a vampire. Individual. You can't like you can't let him in. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's you why twenty three and me left. Home. They all uh, do you see like all their top execs for twenty three and me uh left? They do like the DNA stuff. Why would they just all the quit? I don't know. They just quit. I don't know. Something with DNA, but it's I'm guessing it's because like you something that you you and your fake brother that we can't actually Yeah, they found out you have Transylvanian blood. Yeah. And it's yeah. Halloween time, guys. It's yeah. almost Halloween time. I'm excited. <laughs> anyway, what's been happening in wrestling? Um, everything, right? <laughs> Basically everything. Well we Almost too much. Yeah, Almost took, too much. We took a little and then break. Not so, enough. Yeah, we did take a little breaky poo. We yeah. did. Um, but it's been pretty great. Hiatus. I and like one thing I've been like wanting to get off my chest. It was like the worst time to fucking do it. I'm gonna use some Meta Moon to help me do this. Uh, I I couldn't stand. Nigel Bish, Nigel fucking McGinnis and his Harry Potter outfit during the uh, pay per view, and then you know we come to find last week he gets a title shot. Him, Nigel gets a title shot, like out of all the talent on the roster. And so we're going to start this deserved. episode off hating. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I was happy with the result. Well, you know what is confusing Tony to took, me. With, Tony took me for one, and he was like, he has this match with Daniel Brian Danielson, and um, it's just kind of weird because it's like the whole mock story kind of like exists within this world where it's like, oh, well, the champion isn't around, but like he has a match like in two weeks, not yet, dude, a week or whatever. So. It's, he hasn't been cleared yet. That's the storyline. Okay, okay. Listen up, okay? Next time you watch wrestling. It would have been better if they, like, if uh, Mox locked him in, like, a box somewhere. Yeah, I would have appreciated that. But, yeah, I'm glad that they took care of that for me. And, like, it it was ended up being a happy story for me. And uh, sticking to, you, you know, we're hop- watching hopping- Ring of Honor in 05, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, I was too busy uh learning to read. Yeah. Yeah. I was too busy getting ready for WWE CW to be on TV. Yeah. You guys were too ready crying. And, you were. And now, you were, yeah. yeah. That was a rough year, dude. That was Eddie and, Guerrero that year. See, and now, and now this year, you're getting you're getting ready to learn how to read, right? I. I I'm not trying. There. And uh, speaking of reading, uh, I'll read the first rapid fire. Sticking How about with, you read uh, the room, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in AEW news, Tony Khan is not interested in signing Matt Riddle. That gets a... Uh... Well, he's and... been doing cool stuff in MLW, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, he's... Because he's, he's doing his indie thing, and... He said recently that, like, yeah, he's looking to go back to like a major company. Which when you say that, it's 
AEW or WWE. And that's kind of what spark, sparked Tony saying this. I think some probably asked him about that. And I think it's, I don't know, I think it's dumb to completely close the door on him. I don't know why TK would be a, a D-head about that. Um, yeah, I think that there's a lot of people that really dug him, you know? So I don't know. Maybe it's just because, you know, he's a little messy, you know? I mean, he was a total workhorse, you know, for WWE. Like, he carried yeah. Raw for fuck, and he was wrestling on SmackDown, too. Like, he every single fucking week and then him and randy with the tag titles until randy you know basically broke his back in half and then he kept working then some and i think randy's mentorship definitely helped him during that time period and once he was gone it was kind of yeah because randy went through the same stuff when he was you know and going through wwe he liked to be a party boy and whatever i think guys should be able to party just show up to work don't have botches in the ring because of it and I didn't see any of that happening with Riddle. So, Tony, open your heart and open your I eyes. I think it okay? was like the assault allegations <laughs> that Tony Khan yeah. doesn't want. Yeah, but like, are those like, what is even happening with those? I don't know. It's just they're still there and they're unproven, but they're also like not proven false. So, like, he doesn't want to take the chance, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. He's always been pretty like strict with that kind of thing. Like when he got rid of Jimmy Havoc. Um, yeah. Stuff yeah, like when that, he so. when he suspended Chris Jericho. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. It was just rumors. <laughs> innuendo. And I mean, I didn't I, I I trust Jericho, but still it's rumors. You know what I mean? You have to take it serious. So but we know who's who's got Tony's ear from day one, and it's the Ayatollah of Rock and Roll. Um Yeah, and then uh other news which is pretty which is kind of sad and i'm I'm happy about it because i think it's time <laughs> but uh the rizzler uh adam cole and dmd apparently broke it off which it seems like they already did once he moved yeah. up to pa amazing news broken by conan what a genius yeah thanks yeah. Conan. i don't even know if that's true yeah conan i think that's just rumors fucking... again yeah. Yeah, I don't know, but I th- I think things have definitely soured. Like she was supposed to be at All Out originally, and then she was taken off like the the card and the graphics. That's because she had a stinker though. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. But it takes two to tango. You know what I mean? And I would equally give that to both of them as far to, as far as that match went. Um, yeah. And there's just she's obviously had shit going on backstage for for a while now. I don't know. And she wasn't really, she was cool with CM Punk. She never, you know, after that stuff happened, she was just kind of like, yeah, I've always been cool with Punk. I think she'll do great in NXT. How dare you, dude? How dare you? She would be on the we main bring roster. We bring the boo. <laughs> da, 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 da. Choco, yeah. choco cookies. Great, dude. I'm fucking tired of that guy. Someone sent him <laughs> to the fucking bathroom. Tony said he's interested in signing him, though. Actually, to do what? Unless he has the unless he has the Rizzler as he a is- manager <laughs> with his with his idiot son, I'm not I'm not interested. Hell you so. better have the fucking Rizzler. Um, PWI top ten, well, top five hundred came out and uh. The top 10 uh, was Cody Rhodes, Swerve Strickland, Will Ospreay, Seth Frickin' Rollins, Naito, Damian Priest, MJF, John Moxley, Gunta, and Mystico. And yeah, uh, I don't want to get into this too much because like the end of last year, we'll be I going. I know exactly what you're going to say, dude. What, that if someone's going to be on the list in NJPW, it should be Zack Sabre Jr. and not fucking Naito because he had a bigger impact worldwide? Yeah, that is what I'm going to say. And I love Missy Co., but I, I don't they've see They've done him a lot of crossover stuff end. where they've done a lot of cool shit with different promotions, you know? they've And they judge that list based on, you know, popularity, um, the amount of titles you get, Things I mean, like if the judge on popularity, and overall, overall wrestling. So, like, but I mean, that list is they just placate. There's like, all right, we have to have like like a lucha in the top ten. We have to have like some from NJPW in the top ten. 
instead of actually just do it like you know making a list based off of merit straight through and yeah that's just kind of how they do it every year and i don't know i just feel like any list would be subjective and opinionated exactly. it's kind of like yeah. impossible yeah unless you're in yeah. Beijing angle and then our list at the end of the year because we don't we don't go from fucking <laughs> september to september that's dumb as fuck dude it's a year well, it's like 2024 it's like, it's like how rolling stones uh rolling stone i mean the magazine they did like 100 best albums ever and they didn't put jagged little pill at number one it's just like that's fucked yeah. up, dude. It Throw is that shit. Album. Dude, yeah. Throw that shit in the garbage. That's a shitty list. Yeah, what the yeah. fuck, dude? Isn't that ironic? <laughs> dude, I got one hand in my pocket and the other hand's giving the middle finger to fucking yeah. Rolling Stone. Bro, yeah. honestly, how the fuck do I unblur my bit? There we go. Bro, justice for Jagged Little Pill, bro. Ooh, this is yeah, you got it on vinyl? On vinyl, beautiful. Fuck yeah, dude. One of the coolest dude. album covers, too. Fuck Dave Coulier. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, because he was an asshole, we got, like, a good single out of it, so. Yeah, I don't know about an asshole. I'm more of a pedophile, and, dude. And, R- and R.I.P. Oh, to... rumor. Yeah. Yeah. And that ain't a rumor. Yeah, it was weird because I heard he was a groomer, too. and then uh, I brought my dog to him, and he said, "What are you doing here at your dog?" And All I right. said, "What?" I said, "What?" Dude, you live. My friend Chris told live. me you're a groomer. <laughs> right. That's awesome! It's a clear vinyl. That's dope. Yeah, and shout I, out uh, Walmart. Ever heard of it? You got that from Molly World, really? Yes. Sir. Is that like a limited edition clear vinyl too? I guess it's like a Walmart one. I like, yeah, dude, Walmart I'm glad that they're doing Walmart exclusives for that, just like they do for figs. Yeah, it's always and, just uh, like, too ex- it's always just like a little uh, too expensive. Yeah, yeah. and R.I.P. to uh, Taylor Hawkins, who is the drummer <laughs> on that album. Taylor Swift. Wow, yeah, that's Taylor sick. Swift Hawkins. Yeah, I don't want to get into the Dave Grohl stuff in this episode, guys. So yeah. let's just move on. Rest in peace, hey, Taylor. Listen, he didn't do I it. just, I just want to say real quick, like, I want to apologize, uh, and I'm gonna do my best to help my other my kid in our family. We're we're putting it together, you know, we're holding it together over here. And uh yeah. And I my family feels a lot better now about the whole situation once um Alex Hammerstone showed up in NXT and that's our next rapid fire. <laughs> Which is fucking dope, dude. NXT just keeps keeps getting stacked, dude, with of some of our fave that AEW guys cool now. Thing. Yeah. I don't know about fave got... AEW guys. Oh come on, dude! I don't know why I said fucking, yo. Who who are your favorite? Pillman. Who are your favorite AEW guys? Ethan Page, Brian Pillman, and Sean Spears. I don't know about that. Hey, I didn't bring I mean, up I Sean do Spears. Like all right? Ethan Page. He's I think he was fine. I wouldn't say like yo, he's my top five AEW guy. He's a guy deserved more. I th- you know what I mean? He wasn't my top like he. Uh, I mean, he wasn't I my top five that. either. I can agree with that. And I thought Pillman they could have done done some better stuff with him and like. I mean, they gave him opportunities. It's just like they didn't. I mean, they gave him that match in Cincy against Moxley, and I thought... When they gave him that match in New York at Grand Slam, remember they did, like, MJF versus Pillman Jr.? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It was kind of a stinky one. Yeah, and didn't they work in MLW together, MJF yeah, and Pillman? They had crossover before that. He was um, in but crazy... Yeah. I it was, it, it was in a... He was in, like, the New Heart Foundation. It was, like, Pillman, Teddy Hart, and someone else. Might have been, like, a yeah. guess, maybe Davey Boy? Yeah, D.H. Smith. Yeah. Yeah, why isn't Teddy Hart on the PWI list, dude? <laughs> yeah, he's on the fucking top 500 yeah. wanted list. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's on the fucking the Megan's Law list for sure. Um, <laughs> No one can find him, dude. No one can. But yeah, Alex Hammer's still getting added. And then uh, the Machine Gun Kellys are joining NXT too. Motor City Machine Guns, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, Mo- you know. Motor City Grizzled, Machine Gun Kellys. Grizzled Young Vets. Have been added to AEW, you know. Yeah. We're starting yeah. to see, you know. It's really about the outrunners, though, so. Yes. No, well, I'm just saying it's, like, it's cool to see either tag division have, like, people added to it. And, yeah. Like, Put the tag titles on the outrunners already. Put the tag titles on the outrunners, all right? But they can't. Uh, the the storyline's going longer. The last update to the Twitter account is Teddy Hart in jail is from July 21st of this year. It says no somehow. Yeah, I don't. He just somehow doesn't go to jail or prison. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure he could get a gig with ICW or XPW for sure. 
Yeah, probably. Um, sticking to AEW news, AEW and Fox are in talks for a new TV show, Shockwave. And uh, I mean, this is this comes after Fox. Obviously, uh, their deal ended with WWE, and SmackDown is now back on the USA Network. And uh, Raw obviously is getting ready for um Netflix this January. So I think I think that's awesome. And I know this is a, a hard thing for Jason as well as a rampage guy, but yeah, the rampage is on its way out into the garbage can. Hey, listen. Kind of, kind of bullshit, man. Don't be sad it's over. Be happy it happened. You know what I mean? That's where I'm at. What's your favorite rampage moment? My favorite rampage moment. Damn. The first one CM well, Punk is my favorite. Went downhill so like, after that. <laughs> Most recently, um, a fun one that made me uh tune in, you know, was uh when Darby won that uh Rampage Scramble or whatever it was called, Rampage Royale. Yeah, that was hey, awesome. The Royal Rampage. Where'd yeah, there you go. Yeah, the Rampage Royale at Cheese. I also like the episode when Kenny Omega went on. That was a good one, like a minute ago. Yeah. Trying to remember. And then uh and then other news. Um WWE is set to do a Saturday night Saturday night main event with NBC. Um and they're gonna have Jesse the body ventura doing com being like one of one, the commentators. Is that like a one-off or like- yeah, it's gonna be a one off. Yeah. So I'm I'm hoping they have like they do the cool old school ring vibes and all that shit and have like the blue and white ropes and just I don't know. Stylize yeah. it correctly. I think they will. Surprised it's taken this long since they've like been connected with NBC and Peacock for so long already that like they didn't already do something like this. Um so that's that's cool. And I'm I'm happy about it. I'm happy that Jesse's gonna take some time off from the Baja to uh to come up. To come up and hang out. Hang out with the boys, dude. You know, him and him and punk, uh they have respect for each other, dude. And that's what Jesse said. He said, you know, uh, when Punk went back, I knew it changed. Yeah, but that's because Punk uh, changed, man. Yeah. You changed, um, man. Not the WWE. Jungle Jack changed him, dude. He said, I remember, he I remember said, my favorite. Right, I'm coming back. I remember yeah. <laughs> my favorite Rampage match, guys. It's Good. Kenny versus Christian for the TNA that's title. The first, that's the first episode. <laughs> that's what I was saying, dude. The first episode was the best one, dude. It was sick. Yeah. It was amazing. CM Punk, yeah. Christian getting the TNA title back. And the elite fought the firm it. on it, too. Oh, dude. I forgot about the firm for good reasons. Dude, never forget yeah. the firm. Yeah. That's a firm. Fuck you. I'm over it. Yeah. Firm's a bunch of a bunch of sickos. The firm and the the pinnacle. I was gonna call it the finical. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. What else do we got on the docket? Cause we got like four minutes left. Dude. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, I would say that was most of the heavy news for sure. Um. All the all the bangers and mash uh, he, like, thrown into down. one. He's like going to three hours or some shit after all is on Netflix. I think that's what they're doing a switcheroo, because I think Raw is dropping down to two hours, I believe. So that's what I think they may be doing a switcheroo, but it's only rumored what so a far. What hot piece, bro! They're like finally, we're gonna stop making wrestling yeah. TV three hours just to like lie to us and give another one three hours. Yeah, we were just it's, kidding. It's, it's simply too much wrestling. I know two hours and like fifteen or twenty minutes. See, I'm a, I'm under. I'm an hour forty five guy. I don't, dude. I, how many? I've seen so many dynamites though, where I'm like, give me like 15 more minutes. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. You know. Well, and, I uh, get sleepy, bro. There's done. But I guess we, I guess we end with the biggest news, which after upsetting Jason with Rampage being thrown in the garbage, there's something else being thrown in the fucking garbage, and it's gonna make it's made Chris cry of get him out. Def Rebel seems like they're on their way out finally. Yeah, bro, it's fucked up. Yeah. yeah. They're my favorite company or my favorite musical. Yeah. Company. Hopefully they go on tour after this, so I can go there. Yeah, I heard to... they're replacing them with Lincoln Park with the Scientologist singer. Yeah, that'd be kind of sick actually. And they're only singing Evanescence they only, songs. No, they only sing out <laughs> Ice Hole. Ice Hole. Do you think, Ice... Do you think, oh, no. do you think Ben Bishop yeah. is Ice Hole? 
I don't know. Maybe we can ask him if he knows who fucking oh, the mystery of ice Holt, He's the biggest free agent and he still hasn't been signed like four years later. He hasn't been seen in four years. I don't know yeah. I guess in an ice hole. I guess he. Well, one guy from um, what's it called? Kid Inc. was from ECPW, and he oh, was fuck. just on um. What's his name like? JD Inc. Dynamite. Not Kid Inc. JD Inc. Yeah, Kid Inc.'s like a rapper from like the two thousands yeah. or something. We've all just been getting so many names wrong, dude. That's what happens when we take like a a hiatus of three day, three extra days. Yeah, we have that guy might know ice hole. Yeah, That'd be hilarious true. if you just bring guys from ECPW on to interview. <laughs> you only ask him about ISIL. Yeah, that's the only reason yeah. they're on. Like, and as soon as they say, "Uh, yeah, I don't know where he is." All right, see you later. Like, fuck, dude, where is he? Give bye. us an update. Thank What's you. His number. God, his Thank identity you, is so protected. It's crazy. But yeah, who knew? Just half a face, if it, like paint, half face painted on your face would just protect your identity so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Clark Kent. Yes. So we're here with uh, Big Trouble Ben Bishop, a.k.a. Hurtful Kurt, um, <laughs> former WCPW champion, former yeah. Invictus social media champion, and former ACW heavyweight Boom. champion and tag team champion there, and current um, champion and disruptor. Current um, championship, yep. Yep, current, current party animal champion. And uh, yep. Twitter, yeah, hey, so you would fucking have it. Hell yeah. And that's going to be oh, on baby. the line tomorrow night against uh, Zicky Dice and Hunter James. And uh, sure will. they're fucked. They sure are. That's the easiest way to say it. That's that's the perfect analogy yeah. there, Johnny. That's perfect. Yeah. They're they are fucked. absolutely <laughs> fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing else and, needs um, to be said. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and also, another match that's popping up that looks fucking awesome is you and double j against the heat seekers for global force in uh ohio right I yes believe. sir uh illinois illinois illinois, illinois there's, okay. there's 19 springfield across the uh country so you were close there's a springfield illinois as well no okay. we'll be uh yeah so on saturday me and double j first time ever making our making our tag team debut i've coined the team uh It's going to be a good time. And I have something very special and very fun planned. So um, be on the lookout for that. It's going to be, it's it's definitely going to catch some. Dude, I, I can imagine. And uh, I'm so pumped about the global force in, in general, since double J's brought that back. So it's, yeah, I don't know how much he's going to run it. Honestly, I don't know how many, yeah. how many shows he'll run, but uh, you know, I know that was his baby for a while. So I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, that it continues. That'd be fun to work there for him. Yeah. It'd be cool if he does at least a handful each year and exactly, you know, I'm sure he'll get, great cards like he, he already is for this one um yeah and uh right now too i i will be i will be watching disruptor live tomorrow night too so let's go are you are you a uh, are you in georgia yeah yeah we're, oh, oh shit okay we're jersey boys that uh down in like i'm down in georgia currently okay. atl jason was too but yeah just he's back, back up, up in to jersey, jersey. Okay. Yeah, he's addicted okay. to Jersey, so he had to go back. Not many um, are, but okay. Oh, to each their own. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which up there? Well, yeah. yeah, there's just as many wrestling shows. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's yeah, you can see, yeah. There's there's just as many. I don't know how how good they are in, in, in Jersey. I believe me, I've been <laughs> yeah. on a few stinkers. It depends. I did I did want to bring that up. Yeah, yeah we, please. We we've seen your um your comedy videos, <laughs> and we we have noticed that um. When you talk about sleazy promoters and sleazy promotions, you always tag Tom's River, <laughs> and that that is where I'm I'm born and raised. That's no, his own tag yeah. right now. <laughs> so I know I know full well about these promotions and other uh, promoters. Uh, dude, you know I, when I picked Tom's River, I just kind of was like, I'm just gonna pick a random city in Jersey. So I decided <laughs> on Tom's. I decided yeah. on there was nothing really. I mean, I used to I used to do Grimm's Toy Show, and that's okay. in Tom's yeah. River. But yeah. I'm not calling Grimm like a carny performer. No, no. I, I love Grimm. I love Grimm. He's a great guy um so but it was just like what can be a town that i'm like all right what well, tom's mm -hmm. river sounds funny enough and i and i can say it in the funny accent um but yeah i know a lot of my like a lot of the shtick around the shinny promoter is the jersey shtick even though everybody's yeah. like you have an adam sandler accent which i'm like all right fine whatever everyone thinks i sound like adam sandler <laughs> um which is fun so kind of northeast but that northeast guy right like it doesn't matter where he's from who cares um not doing like you know deep uh accent accent research yeah. here um for these stupid comedic videos but yeah you know i mean i've seen everything <clears throat> i've seen you know i've I've been wrestling now i mean tomorrow is my five-year anniversary in wrestling yeah. so oh, i've yeah. definitely seen a lot i mean it's still only five years i'm not saying i'm like some grizzled vet or anything but 34 years old so like i know, I know i've been around the block once or twice in in life 
you know, not because life pro wrestling isn't life at the end of the day. Um, there's a lot more to it. Uh, but some, some people don't think that. Um, but so I've, I've definitely seen a lot, you know, I was trained by James Ellsworth and, um, he took me on the road, like right when I started, um, and, you know, you learn a lot in those car rides and I learned more about what not to be in pro wrestling than what to do be in pro wrestling. <laughs> and that is actually more important if you can yeah. believe it, because there's a lot of carnies, there's a lot of pieces of shit. There's a lot of garbage. Um, and cause that's what it is, man. It's a travel, like wrestling's a circus, you know? And so it's yeah. all those old carny tricks that they used to use the PT Barnums of the world that, that <laughs> all exists in professional wrestling. It's not a, it's, it's not this like, you know, when people think professional wrestling, you think WWE, right? This like glamorous product and this well-run company well, to, to some, this very well-run company. Um, but in the, you don't, you don't think of like the indie wrestling, which is a, yeah. at, at the end of the day is, you know, still kind of stuck in, you know, 1980, 1990 with the way things usually are done. Yeah. Uh, besides yeah. social media, nothing's really changed. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've seen a lot and you know, what ended, ended up happening and I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to, I want to have fun with this. And there's so much funny stuff and silly stuff in wrestling and no one, I don't know if people are afraid to talk about it to get like, you know, heat. Right. Yeah. But I don't know if people are afraid or they just like, don't know how to portray it. And I was like, you know what? Like let's have fun with this. I always joke around. I would always joke around with my buddies about how wrestling is. I would joke around with Ellsworth. We'd like laugh about it. I'm like, you know what? I think this can be entertaining. I did it for me. Like I did it just to pop myself yeah. and a few buddies, but then, you know, it, it grew, it grew. And for, fortunately it did. <laughs> Tell me yeah, no. it. yeah. That's what's awesome. Cause yeah, I don't see, really many people like wrestlers taking advantage of like doing stuff on social media i mean you have like the uh the Jack matt cardona's yep. and of, of old that like kind of took advantage and said of whatever course. i'm gonna do my own thing on social media and and have fun with it and uh yeah it's, he's it's the best great. i mean he was the number uh, one guy to take advantage of it you know and now and then um of course jack vaughn um, has yeah. done a tremendous job with it and uh jack's great you know i always sing jack's praises you know we do we have a different style to what we how we portray our comedy is definitely a little more controversial which is okay you know and he he he, he definitely uh presses buttons you know um but i am i when we first met you know i was like you know is he gonna be kind of like oh what are you doing my shtick you trying to like steal my stuff and he was nothing but cool we've collaborated a bunch of times jack's great i can you know i think he's very creative um and but and so i can never say enough good things about jack um, but yeah, you know, I think it's really important that wrestlers need to take advantage of social media. There's only so much TV time you can get. There's only, you have to take it. Like there's most of the time, more people will see your social media than they'll see you on TV. So why not take yeah. advantage of those eyes? Right. And you can, you can do it. You control it. You know, you're not, you know, you don't have to wait for somebody to give you that spot. You can go out and do it. And Matt did it in 2011, I believe, or 10 or 11 when he yeah. started Z true Long Island story. Um, and was like, you know what? Fuck it, dude. I'm going out. And I'm going to make I'm I'm going to make them want to book me. And he did a tremendous job. And, you know, but not many people do, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. they're so, still living in the past, I feel like, because social media is just so prevalent. Why not take advantage of it? And uh, yeah, it's worked. Yeah. It's worked great. You know, Joey Janela is another one that I forget. He he's done a great job on social media over the last few years. Um, yeah. and building an audience and building, you know, building a following and getting people to believe in you, you know, talk yeah. about the things you do are important, but also engage with people. That's the number yeah. one thing too. Is like, not a lot of wrestlers do that. I had one wrestler reach out to me after I was like engaging with a lot of fans. Like, Hey man, you would like, you know, you, you talk to a lot of fans, whether it be positive or negative, like you, you, you kind of go back and forth with them a lot. And I'm like, yeah, why? He's like, you don't see like Roman Reigns doing that. And I'm like, well, I'm not, not Roman Reigns. Like, I mean, if yeah. I was Roman Reigns, I, yeah, I wouldn't use Twitter or Instagram ever. I'd be fine. I don't have to do yeah, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm yeah. like, well, I'll, I'm like, dude, I, I mean, I get what you're saying. Like, and to an extent, it's like, you know, you don't see the top guys doing that very often, but I'm not a top guy. Right. Yeah. Like, it's like, you yeah. gotta, you gotta understand, you gotta work to get your, you gotta work a way mm -hmm. to get yourself over. And, you know, I thought at first um, that, you know, when I first started, I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm a big guy. I'm a pretty good looking guy. Like, I, you know, I don't need to, I don't need to worry about that. I'm going to get a job in a year or two. And I kept saying that, ah, oh, next year I'll be good. Ah, oh, next year I'll be good. I'll get a job. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do this social. No, it wasn't the case. I was resting yeah. on my laurels thinking I can just get over by being a big guy, right? And being a former mm -hmm. athlete. Um, but I just, so I said, to, um, so finally last year, I was like, you know, screw it, dude. If like, I'm going to start doing, having some fun with this. And if it gets me, you know, heat, and it's me heat. I'm in the same place I've been. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not losing anything. So yeah. uh, let's just give it a shot. And like I said, you know, work for the positive, I guess.
Uh, and I'm sure yeah. it was an advantage too coming in at like 29 30 like yeah. into the wrestling business like as you're saying dealing with all that carny shit and like people trying to get over on you and just having like that already just that world knowledge you yeah, know dude. like uh, I always say that that's that's a great point Johnny because like I always say that you know, I kind of wish I would say if I if I had to get started I would have said I would have liked to get started at like 26 27 so maybe like three years earlier yeah. um but you know 29 was fine and I, it, it's, it's really unfortunate because I see a lot of kids get into wrestling like 18, 19, 20, yeah. you know, and they don't have that knowledge. They don't go to college and there's nothing wrong with not going to college. That's not the point, but like not having like real world experiences at, at all or yeah. like going away, going to kind of, you know, staying in a certain town or like not seeing, not seeing things and you get caught up in that. So you may, you might get caught up in like a promoter trying to carny you and say, oh, you can only work my promotion. You know, you're like, oh, okay, I guess this is the only important promotion here. Oh, he's going to put a belt on me. Oh, cool. Yeah, uh, you know, it's like I I can't leave I can't leave him. And a lot of a lot of young wrestlers get caught up in that, and then they get stuck. And they're like, "Oh, cool, dude, you're like the you're the man in this thirty mile radius." But like after that, who knows who you are? Like, cool that the forty five fifty people that come to the shows once a month know who you are. Like that's great, dude. Yeah. And they're cheering for you, and you get big pops coming out of the curtain because you're in a tiny little VFW, and you can all oh, fifty people sounds like there's twenty thousand people there. You know, like that's that's great if that's what you want to do. If you're a weekend warrior and that's your cool thing, and hey, you know, all power to you. But like, you never. And but I hear guys that do that, and then they complain about like, oh, I'm not getting opportunities, not getting opportunities. But well, you're not giving yourself the opportunity to get opportunities. Uh, you're just sitting back and like resting on those laurels, being like somebody will find me. Which you know, I I thought I thought of, I was doing for a while. Like they they know who I am. They'll find me. Ain't the case. It ain't the case. Some guys get over that way. Some guys. You know, get jobs after never having a wrestling match. They'll go all of a sudden the right person at the right time sees them and they have the right ear of the of the of the person who needs to hear it. And that works for them. You know, but you yeah. know, I wasn't getting that opportunity. You know, I had I, I had the WWE tryout, wasn't the right time, right? Bad timing. I wasn't I wasn't ready, and it was a weird time in WWE. It was 2011, yeah. early 2011, right after 2021, sorry, 2021, right after the pandemic. You know, and it was a weird time and like and that was right. Canyon Seaman was still there. And he just got, he got let go a few months after they were going through these odd, like ups and downs in NXT. He didn't know yeah. bad timing, bad timing, a W, you know, I, I had my first match there in 2021, you know, they just weren't ready to give me, you know, that I was there in uh. 2022, not ready, you know, uh. bring in big show. It's like, Oh, we have another big guy, which I'm like, I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But, yeah. You know, whatever, but like, uh. I'm not taking big shows. Sp- I'm big shows, big show. I like, think I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to take his spot. You know, yeah. so so they they so like then you know so weird timings, weird timings. You know, then then another yeah. big guy, then they get sat and sing. It's like oh now we have another big guy, which I never will understand the whole like we already have a big guy. It's like you have a bunch yeah. of guys at six foot and under. You already have those guys. Yeah. Like why yeah. can't you have more big guys? What's the yeah, big thing about doesn't... like can't have a big guy? Well, you can have forty guys at five eight. Like mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And your first match AW was uh, Bear Bronson, right on Dark. It sure was, I believe. Sure and was. then yeah, yeah and then. Yeah, we were we were dark fans. So that's like I think the dark first time we fun. we came across yeah, you. Yeah. And then I yeah, then you Very cool. faced yeah. ten at the time. Yep, ten. Yeah. Yep, Frex yeah. yeah. Great yeah, guys. Dark. I had a really good I'm sorry, what was that? You I was like saying dark was so cool because you would see yeah. indie talent and then you could yeah. go find them in your area. It was awesome. It was it was mm-hmm. I think that was really, you know, underrated. One of the best things AEW has done for the mm-hmm. wrestling community because a lot of guys got noticed. And, you know, still people come to me and be like, oh, I saw you. I saw you on dark, you know, yeah. and, I saw, and, I, and I'm, you know, I was always a realistic thinker because I always said like, dark's cool. Don't get me wrong. Dark is a very cool thing to do. And it's an accomplishment. But I was always like, it's not, it's, it's still like not super important. You know, I'd be like, eh, you know, I, 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 I didn't want to say like, oh, I was on dark. I was on dark, this, that, or the other, you know, like, it's like, it's cool, but you gotta, you gotta be honest with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, but so like, but I never was able to kind of say like, hey, you know, it is cool. You know, people do see you on this. You know, it was seen at the end, at the end of the day, like between 300 and 400,000 people watch dark on yeah. YouTube. So like, it's, yeah. it, it's being noticed by people. And so you, I had to step back and be like, you know what? It is cool. You know, people be like, hey, you're going to go back. Hey, I saw your match against Vance. I saw your match against uh, Bronson. Um, two great guys. I can sing their praises as well. Great guys. I had, re- I had really good experiences on dark. I know some guys might not have. I had a really two awesome opponents. Um, yeah, really good guys. So that was great. Um, and yeah, I, I I think I think Dark was at the time. You know, I I 
was like, ah, you know, it's just like a YouTube show, but it really, you know, thinking back, I'm like, that was an awesome time for, for indie wrestling at, at, yeah. at least. Yeah. And to go back on like when we were talking about social media, like social media is what led me and Jason. Cause we, the first time we saw you live was at a uh, Invictus in February of 22. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, was, yeah. I think what I talked to you and uh, Brandon Walker a little. That's bit. That's right. Okay, that was That's the one. It was it. it was me and me and Chris versus uh, Wrecking Ball and Adam Kerr. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You know that one. That, that, was fun, that was a very fun show. Yeah. That was a fun show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, another, I, I really um, always love working with Wrecking Ball and uh, mm-hmm. and Kerr. Um, you know, two big beefy monsters, yeah, monster big. guys that make me uh-huh. look small. Uh, but it's you know there it was great to work it was great to work with Brandon too another cool thing mm-hmm. you know getting to be getting to work with Barstool a little bit and going to the office and do some stuff there mm-hmm. um, you know I wish Brandon had more time unfortunately he's too important at Barstool I wish yeah. he wasn't I wish he wasn't as important <laughs> yeah. as he is because uh, I was hoping he would come to the show on Saturday he lives in Illinois now so I said hey do you want to come to see um, me and Jeff's I texted him this morning see me and Jeff's tag team debut because I'll be in Auburn for the Auburn Arkansas uh, game yeah, yeah. yeah. He's doing all the college football rounds. Now. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. in fall yeah. for Brandon's kind of tough. Uh, but happy for them. You know, I'm really stoked that they got wrestling back. Um, yeah. and you know, because uh, my good buddy Nick, uh, Nikki the Good on Twitter, you know, that we did the Meat Pop Express podcast, uh, taking a little bit of a hiatus because we're both very busy right now. But um, he's back to helping out on, on wrestling and keeping that he's the heart uh, and soul of awesome, uh, yeah. of wrestling. Brandon just kind of shows up and does the interview, uh, but yeah. but Nick does everything behind the scenes. So I, I'm super stoked for them that uh, they're back doing that because I know they both really love it. Yeah, yeah, it's a really cool like platform too. Like how dark was it's like. Mm-hmm. It's just interesting to see things outside of like I don't know mainstream channels, you know. Definitely, like definitely, because we're we're in that we're in that time we're in that time period now where you know wrestling it's it's not all kayfabe anymore, right? Where it's like, hey, you know, you, you when you turn on wrestling, pro wrestling, you kind of it's an escape, right? You're like, hey, it's like watching a movie, yeah. right? Like it's like hey, you know, I mean, we know now, yeah. we know it's we know suspend it's suspend your disbelief. It's, it's just yeah, and you kind of sit there and you know the best can put on a good story and suspend your disbelief. Like you said, at the same time, like, you know, you, you could be yeah. like, I can't wait to see Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Even though, you know, we all know it's scripted. Right. But it's like, yeah. I can't wait to see, it. I can't wait to see MJF. I get beat up by somebody in the next pay-per-view or whoever, because he's so good at what he does. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it's like, a, it's just, it's, it's something that you can just sit there and, you know, Hey, I can just escape from reality for for a little bit so yeah. you know nowadays you know using the social media doing the but like behind the curtain type stuff you know fans want it you know it's, yeah. like, it's you know not fans always don't want like just the everything tweeted in storyline everything tweeted you know and i get it keeping up kayfabe i believe that i believe in it to an extent um but at the same time you know it's like 90 besides the kids like 90 yeah. percent of fans are, are gonna be like all right well we get what this is you know, yeah. so it's, it's, I think I, social I'm media torn is, a little yeah, on. yeah. I th- I, that's why I find social media kind of important because it blurs the lines a little bit, even for adults. So, like, when they don't know if real beef is going on or they just, I don't know, I yeah. think it's, it's more that's... dirt sheets or just like times a thousand now. So, it's kind of like, oh, these guys are, from, from what I heard from uh, Meltzer, they're pissed at each other. So, this is, you know, wonder mm-hmm. what's going to happen. So, like, I think that's added a little bit to it. That's the funny that. thing. Layer. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It's it's funny because then you know everybody now all of a sudden has their opinions, right? They are then like, like oh, so and so hates hates this person because this, and no one really knows the full like true story besides the people that are there. Um, and you never know what you never know what's true or not. And even wrestling, we don't know. Like I have a bunch of buddies at AEW, and some of them don't even know. They're like, well, I didn't know that happened. <laughs> They'll say it. Yeah. Like, I have no, I, I have no idea. Like, I, he's like, I don't think it happened. It didn't seem like it did. I know what was talking about it here. It's like, who the hell heard about it? Right. Um, and it's, it, I take the dirt sheets, you know, with a, with a grain of salt. I've, I've kind of lightened up on, on Dave Meltzer and I, for a, for a while there, I was kind of really hard on, like, I was just continually like trying to bury him. I mean, he's got a ton of followers. I'm not trying to say I'm more important than him. Um, uh, but like, you know, I just always thought like, it's, he's kind of a phony, but it is what it is. You know, the guys make, uh, I'll say this. I respect the guy for making his money the way he does. He, he, does, yeah. he does a good job. He makes a hell of a living. So, you know, uh, all power to him. And if people take the star rating seriously, then, hey, again, all power to them. You know, I don't, yeah. but, hey, it's awesome if you do. Um, so I'm kind of like, ah, eh, you know, I'm not going to knock his hustle anymore. I don't agree with him, but it is it is what it is. Um, yeah. And sometimes I think he's just controversial for the sake of being controversial. 
be completely honest. hundred like, percent. Yeah. I think he knows what gets clicks. <laughs> like, yeah, hey, he likes, yeah, say. he wants to get the heat for sure. Cornette's yeah. like that. I, you know, Cornette, he's similar. Yeah. Bischoff, similar, even though I believe that they believe what they're saying, but I think it's a little, they know, like, if I embellish this just a little bit, if I really don't like something, if I don't like this, but I make it seem like I loathe it, I'm going to get, I'm going to get some hits here. And so, yeah. hey, no, don't knock. They're, they're, they're carnies at the end of the day in a good way, in a good way. They're everyone's, a, yeah. everyone wrestling's a carny. So they know, they know what they're doing. They're working. A lot of them are, a lot of them are. Yeah. I mean, they, they seem all like the same characters as they were like on television back then. Same with Vince Russo, all of them just, mm -hmm. you know, and everything they just hate. Rest you know, like most of the reviews, like I hate wrestling, but it's all I talk about. So it's yeah, right. It's funny. It's funny. <laughs> it There's really is. Russo. He's like, oh, it's, this is horrible, bro. It's just fucking horrible. And then it, it's like, dude, you have a podcast about wrestling, and it's the all you talk. talk about. Yeah, I think that's critics but, in general. Like since the beginning of critiquing things, like mm -hmm. Ebert and Siskel were like that. Like this movie's horrible. It's like. Do you guys even enjoy doing this? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Like, they, they like hate watching it, you know. Like, yeah. it's just, like are you just, uh -huh. are you just are you just like masochists and you just want to put yourself through pain and you say you don't enjoy this stuff? I don't think. I honestly, when it comes to like a cornet, um, I like because I don't listen to Russo. I listen to Bischoff a little bit. I, I've I've listened to cornet for a while now. Yeah. Like I said, I don't think. I think it's like seventy five percent, like eighty percent, like truthful. I think that there's like a twenty percent of him just being Jim Cornette. Yeah, and, you know, be, being the character of Jim Cornette, um, because he knows he, he's so good with words. You know, he can he can cut somebody up really well, um, and he knows that's what people are gonna pounce on. He has his following. He legit has a cult following, so yeah. he, they're gonna like it, and that's what they want to hear. You know, if they don't want to hear him glazing AEW and saying how great it is, yeah. he knows that's not what they want to hear. <laughs> they want to hear him yeah. bash it. Unfortunately, and I'm not agreeing yeah. with it, but. The guy's making millions of dollars doing this shit. So who can who can say it even to him? Yeah, no, exactly. And it seems like he's warmed up a little bit to AEW over time. You know, he, like he, here he, and there. He's, yeah. He talks he about the guys the he likes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he'll say, like, I like I like Swerve Strickland. I don't like what he's doing. I like him. I like MJF. I don't like what he's doing, but I like him. You know, so he likes guys, but it's just yeah. and girls, but he's just, you know, he is what he is. And he he knows, he knows, like, hey, I, I might not hate this person, but hey, I'm gonna. 30 seconds just ripping them apart like i'm a wrestling like i'm a, like i'm back in wrestling so yeah because people will people will pick it up and he'll, he'll trend and he'll get more money yeah yeah absolutely and he's just got endless amazing one-liners that oh it's incredible he he's learned amazing. growing up you know going early on an early oh, yeah. age into the business and just yeah all these old timers that just yeah he just pulls them out of his ass he's got like a million of them and they're just <laughs> They're amazing. Incredible. They should all be used in movies. Like I, I'm just like I hit like all of his one. Like, dude, how, people need to be writing this down for scripts. That's for just like locker dude, rooms. It's... People talking shit in locker rooms back in the day. Yeah. You know, a lot of I know a lot of wrestlers. That's where they get a lot of their shit. You know, like The Rock says it. You know, he was he got a lot of his shit from being in the Miami Hurricanes locker room in college. You yeah. know, like it's you know, a lot of guys get that stuff. I got some of my stuff. You know, I say meat pop. I got that from a locker room. You know, we used to call guys who were like big like you know brolic dudes like oh yeah he's a meat pop you know <laughs> and so we so we would say like that's that's the sh so we, we we would say all that shit too so it's a lot of stuff i got was from uh was from like locker rooms and stuff but it's it's just that's that's how cornet is and he, he's he's an incredible linguist you know you yeah. can't nobody how many people better than him um but yeah i think it's like again it all comes down to everybody's a worker everyone's a worker yeah yeah absolutely especially you know when you go to the old school guys there yeah they mm -hmm. They keep the veil up for sure. I was just say another event I had seen you at, which I thought was such a cool fucking setup for wrestling, was like district wrestling and like the nightclub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I thought that was so. Yeah, I love that setup. Uh, Jason was there too. It was when we first yeah. came down, Went like early on when we were in Georgia, and uh, yeah, I love like you can stand up on the catwalk and stuff, and just that whole setup was was kind of cool but i guess it kind of ended after that last big yeah event. it's tough it's tough for you know they, uh, i think i think they put on six total uh my yeah. good buddy um actually who was running most of it was um uh J jack jameson from uh the iron savages so he was the yeah. one kind of because he worked at district um and he was you know using it and then you know it's just it's it's tough to put on wrestling shows it's not easy it really yeah. isn't and all power to him to even do six because some people do like two or three and they call it quits. He, him and um, Diamond Sheik was helping running a lot as well. Yeah. They put a lot into it and they tried and, you know, it just schedules didn't work and just things, you know, it, it ends up becoming like 
you know, you want to, you want to enjoy wrestling and then it just becomes a job and it becomes a nuisance and you start to loathe it. So, um, yeah. that's how promoting is, you know, promoting is not easy. I, I see it, you know, cause Ellsworth runs his promotion in, in, uh, Maryland and I see it all the time. You know, he's, he, he works to make a profit and he does make a profit on his shows. Uh, cause it's a job to him. It's not just, you know, a play thing and he doesn't want to, yeah. you know, he, he's not there just to have a bunch of buddies that he'll book on the show and have fun. No, he wants to make money and he does it in a smart way. Um, and you know, I don't know if this is a secret to anybody, but not a lot of promoters make money on their shows. You know, it's very no. much like a, it's a fun hobby. You know, they want to do something fun. They want to, they want to put on shows and, you know, they're hoping to eventually make money. It's a big investment. Here's a perfect example. WCPW at Windy City, Windy City Pro Wrestling. Um, uh james duck is the uh kirby but he's known as uh he runs big time we'll call him big time big time he runs um windy say professional wrestling and his first event in the late 2021 he had 35 people so you know and it, it, he he brings good talent in. he brings guys that look the part guys and girls that look the part you know he's not going to bring people in that you look like they're just like a weekend warrior or don't go to the gym he's very serious about his product and he wants like a good looking, like good looking, um, in shape roster. Um, and that's what he, it's what he always preaches. So, you know, he, he doesn't bring, he doesn't have a lot of local guys who so will sell tickets to family and friends. He has an organic. And anyway, if we go over the 30, but that's fine guys, we can keep going. Okay. Um, so, um, he, so that, that's a perfect example. 35 people in 2021, at the end of 2021, when he, when he brought back WCPW, you know, it used to be a thing back in the day, but it wasn't around for a while. You know, and then, you know, gradually I came in, I think in 2022, in September of 2022 was my first show with Windy City. Um, and then it just like continued to, when I was there, I think it was like 85 people. Right. And then it kept growing 120, 140, 180, 200, you know, it continued. And our last show we just did uh, at Stacked, Windy City, the WCPW Stacked, there was 350 to 400 people there you know, for that show. So it's a testament to him. It takes time. It's a lot of investment. You know, it's not like he was, you know, it's not like he was making money on these shows. It was, it was costing money because he was flying people in and he does a great job. He is the lead. He is the last person I would ever call a shindy promoter because he does an outstanding job with getting talent, you know, traveling all this stuff. So um, getting people there, getting people rides, coordinating. Jimmy Kleckner is his partner does a great job as well, but it takes time. It takes time to build a territory or build a town. And he's done a tremendous job. So all power to him. I'm sure I'll, I'll tell him that I shout him out in this podcast and he'll definitely listen. He likes hearing his, he likes hearing his name. I'll give him, I'll rib him too. Oh, big time. Likes to hear his name in lights or see his name in lights. Um, but yeah, no, that's, I, so that's a big testament to him uh, and just growing and it, but it takes time. It's not something that you can just be, I'm going to run a wrestling show and make $5,000. Yeah. If you think that then buddy, <laughs> yeah I, I gotta i gotta i don't know i'm not cornet i don't have the witty thing to say but you know i have an igloo in uh, mexico to send you or, so, or sell you, yeah. you know? so, um, yeah. better way to say that but yeah it's tough and if you want to bring in like uh you know kind of national talent from other territories and areas and stuff like yeah you're gonna have to put them up in a and hotel invest. get flights and yeah the way i think of it is like Everyone tells us as wrestlers, you got to invest, right? You got to invest in gear. You got to invest in, you know, custom music. You got to invest in the gym. You got to invest in this. You got to invest in traveling to these places. Well, at the same time, promoters, you got to invest too. Like, yeah. you don't, don't think that like, just, just like, we don't, like you're, you're giving us this platform to perform. We're investing in ourselves. We're trying to have professional gear made, you know, that does not, is not cheap by any means, a couple hundred dollars a pop for gear yeah. or just a pair of pants, Right. You know, we're, we're getting custom music made. We are getting graphics made, promo pictures. You know, we're keep going to the gym, taking time out of our day, um, either, whether you're taking supplements or whatever it may be that costs money too. So it takes, it takes like, you know, it, we have to invest a lot into it as well. Travel, you know, it, it, you're not getting big payoffs. So you, when you go to these shows, like you got to still eat, you got to pay for gas, you got to pay for all this. So even if you're making 150. Yeah. You know, maybe make another fifty to a hundred bucks in merch. Okay, cool, two fifty. You know, but after a full day of work, travel, all that, you know, paying gas, this, that, and the other, eating, you know, like maybe you're profiting a hundred bucks, but you just spent a whole day doing shit. You know, maybe. So, yeah. Um. So, like, we we have to invest, and I also say, promote. You guys got to invest. So don't think that it's yeah. a one way street. That only we're the ones that are going to have to put the work in. You got to promote. You got to do the Facebook ads. You got to go out and flyer. You got to do that type of stuff. It's not up to us. Because at the end of the day, like we cut one promo, it ain't gonna 
it ain't going to sell a hundred tickets. You got to go out to the local, local stores. You got to go out, give tickets to, you know, say, Hey, kids are getting in free. Oh, cause their parents will pay. You can bring the kids, right. Bring the kids for yeah. free, parents will pay, you know, so you can get some, you get some buzz around it. Um, and they got to do that type of stuff. It's not just, Hey, post the poster and Hey, we're all good. You know, yeah. it might look like a good, it might look like a sick poster. You might have some real good talent on the show, but you know, it might get like 60 people. If people yeah. aren't doing anything, you know, you gotta, you gotta put in the work. No. Yeah, we've we've been the good shows with great talent, but not many people have shown up. Yeah, it's just like it comes down. Yeah. To, I think a lot of it comes down to too, like where it's located. Sometimes they run too early in the day, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and one of my it's, like biggest pet peeves with like a lot of indie shows is like cards with like fifteen matches on it. Oh, dude, don't even get me it's started, like, man. And that's oh, all yeah. that, like to bring it back. That's another like Tom's River thing. Oh, it's I like know. It's a people who run around here. It's like a twelve to fifteen match yep. card. I'm like, yep. I've been on those. You, I can tell you a story where you're talking about Titan. Was, yeah, it, it, <laughs> yeah, that them, was one of them. <laughs> all those people, yeah. And I like, I don't where, mind Billy. I like, but yeah, I, I, yeah. it's a long show. It's a I went to. It was me and my buddy who's into wrestling, and then one of my friends who's just like aware of wrestling came to an indie show with us, and it was like their big, uh, their big uh, card for that year. We show up 7 p.m., having fun. At this point, it's 11.30 at night. We're oh. like, all right, we really want to see this main event. We like who's in this match. We'll stay, whatever. The guy comes out. He's like, all right, before the main event, we got a 50-man Royal Rumble before the main event. Oh, my like, God. <laughs> you should have seen so many people stand up and leave. And I was like, come on, guys. It's 11.30 oh. at night. See, that's just out of no. Was that was that a Titan show? It was. I think it was I, a, a Mega Slam SWF oh, oh, show. Okay. Oh well, Rob. So here. that's probably. Yeah. 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 But, well, again, where I where do you think I get my uh, my shitty? Yeah, yeah. yeah, Bob, yeah, Fu yeah. Bob Furio. Um, yeah. yeah. No, that sounds about right. And unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. that you know the problem I had one time was in Rhode Island, and I always because mm -hmm. I'm from Rhode Island, so I wanted to work in I wanted to work in Rhode Island, and um, you know I was booked there, and uh, nothing not a shot at the promoter, but I got there and I found out it was a 13 match card. And I was second to last because uh, yeah. I got it because I, you know, I sold 100 tickets to the show. Shoot, you know, friends and family who never get to see me wrestle wanted to come. They're not wrestling fans, right? Like yeah. a few of them are, but not like, you know, casual. Like we like it enough to go to an indie show you're on. And then other family members who are like, we are literally only going to this once for you. Like We'll come see you once, you know, yeah. um, they did. And my grandmother was there, you know, in her 80s, you know, and mm -hmm. she'll start at seven. And by the time me and Wrecking Ball Ligurski went out of the curtain to wrestle, it was 1045. Yeah. And I'm just like, and everybody there is like texting me, when are you going to be on? There was like yeah. four hardcore matches. Everybody was going 15, 20 minutes. It was a yeah. pain in the ass. We're just like, what? who is policing this? Like someone yeah. has got to say like, stop. Because no one, this is a problem the promoters have. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll say like, okay, this, this match is 12 to 15 minutes. It's like, oh, I, I timed out the card. It's two and a half hours. Yeah, but you don't realize there's time in between that. Yeah, like, like you're not you're yeah. saying like bell to bell and no it should be curtain to curtain twelve to fifteen like when you come out the timer starts there's no yeah. and, and you know unfortunately on indie shows there's no way to tell the ref like hey get them going right a lot of them don't yeah. do that uh, some do you know some wear the head and the, the professional ones will but a lot of them don't so the workers got to be cognizant and say like mm -hmm. you know Ellsworth's great because he, he doesn't have the the rest with the with the uh, the microphones in their ears or the, the headphones in their ears but he will count and he will stand by and he will say. When they come, when you come back, why did you go five minutes over? Like he'll get mad at guys as for for a good reason because he yeah. doesn't want his shows. He says two hours fifteen minutes. That's it. That's as long as the show should go. No people bitch about Raw being three hours. Did they want to yeah. watch us for three hours? No, they don't want to watch us no. for three hours. Two hours fifteen minutes. You got fifteen minute intermission. Two hours of action. People leave happy. They're like, hey, I want to see more next time. You know. Yeah. But if you get if there for three and a half hours, it's like, when is this gonna fucking end? Yeah. I don't want to see these guys anymore. So like I get it. It's it's a, and for workers it sucks. It mm -hmm. sucks. It sucks being there all night. You know we're just like come on man. Like let's get to it. Like we don't want to sit mm -hmm. in this crowded locker room all night. You know and, and like especially if you're in the last like three matches and it's a fourteen match card. Like be ready to be there for four and a half five hours. Well yeah. since the bell starts you're there two hours before so you're there yeah. for seven eight hours. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No. I know we're winding down and I wanted to bring up one thing that uh. My alleged brother might have sent in a cameo to you trying to slander, slander this podcast. Didn't I slander yeah. him? 
You slandered him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're, we're very happy. Yeah. 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 We're here to yep. thank you for that. Turn it around. So. Turn it around. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Got to keep people guessing. guessing. Good. Fuck him. Fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> Was his name yeah. Mike, right? Was it Mike? Yeah, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah fuck Mike. Yeah. Yeah. He's a sicko, Sick dude. Fuck. That was funny. He's been, yeah, he he's been banned from the premises. Of course, oh, so. my God. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got an alleged Rio um, addiction, too. So Rio? Yeah, and he, he, he's too he into gets, Rio. He gets mad when we don't talk about Rio's matches on the podcast. Oh, Rio, AW. the wrestler. I was like, yeah, yeah. oh, the wrestler. Yeah. But, um, oh, yeah. yeah, not the yeah, Duran been, Duran album. He's yeah, he so yeah. <laughs> he really but, loves uh, Duran Duran. Kind of winding down. So, like, what are some... Uh, we're talking about a lot of different companies. What are some companies that uh, you're you're kind of you would like to collaborate and work with? Like yeah, the GC, I mean, like the GCWs, the NWAs would, of the world, the MLWs. MLW, hundred percent. You know, I, I you know I think they got a lot of great talent. Matt Riddle, Cruel, Manders, um, just a, just a few um, who I really like personally and professionally. Um, who I'd love to work BRG as well. Um, so MLW definitely GCW, of course. You know, I'm friendly with a few of the guys there. So hopefully at some point we can, I can make that happen maybe in 2025. Um, Wrestling Revolver is a great show. Uh, Beyond yeah. Wrestling would love to work with. I'm trying to get to work some bigger indies, you know, because that does help. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I was told by a very smart man who told me one day and said like, hey, you know what? It doesn't matter about the match as long as you get your picture on some of those bigger posters. And he's like, yeah. and you get the match graphics on like the Beyonds and the Defies and the Revolvers. Um, and you have some of those bigger indies. Like you get it on the, like, that's what stands. Like no one's going to watch the match. It's like people will, but not many. So I got a great match yeah. coming up. Honestly, you know, I, on October 11th, I'm working cool for the IWTV title. So I'm, I'm very, very excited um, about that. So that'll hopefully get some more eyes. Where's that at? That's in uh, Canton, Georgia, Southern honor. So there. Okay. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's, Love that's that awesome. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I, we, we go to a lot of Southern honor and yeah, cruel, is yeah definitely one of my faves too so that's awesome yeah. so that'll be a and good that'll be a good match two big guys and uh no one you know no one's as big as cool around here so we're gonna uh, yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be good it's gonna be good and it's for the iwtv title so uh we'll pull out all the stops we'll yeah that's fun. huge man that's awesome yeah that's that's uh october 11th october 11th yeah that's their, be, that's their six year anniversary too. show no, yeah. So October 11th, Southern Honor Wrestling, Canton, Georgia. It sounds like you've been there before, so I'm going to plug it too much. Um, yeah, IWTV title, me versus Cruel. Um, you know, I, I I I can't wait because you know we we've wrestled before at MomoCon. That video has not surfaced yet. Um, there was one video of me suplexing him on the concrete floor there, though. That's sick son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, we're going to. Uh, I think it's it's something that a lot of people I've heard like rumblings about. People have wanted to see. Uh, since we bar both in Georgia, we have both two different type of aesthetics as well. It's a good, uh, it's a good pairing, um, you know, big guys, but definitely two different big guys. Uh, so we're going to, uh, I think I'm, I'll call it now. I think it'll be match the night. I'm going to call it that. I'm going to, I'm going to say that match the night at Southern Honor six, the anniversary show. Um, but so, still here six, I'll say, um, yeah. Southern Honor 66. I believe that's the, that's the number they're on. Uh, and I'm happy I'm finally involved with Southern Honor, to be honest. I mean, it's only 35, 40 minutes away from me here. I'm in Athens, yeah. Georgia. So um, it's great to have like kind of a promotion that's very close instead of having to go mm. five, six hours to the closest promotion. To have a disruptor and Southern Honor now is great. Yeah, and it's got an interesting vibe because when we came down here, like I didn't know anything really about the Georgia, Tennessee territories and like promotions and stuff. And that was one of the early ones I went to. And yeah, it's cool. And like just kind of figuring out the lay of the land when i go myself like as far as like gary running it and then they figure out he's also like runs the church and does all this other stuff and oh, i didn't even know that that's pretty cool to know that too he, yeah he owns it's, that it's... whole shopping center oh okay interesting I have no idea. He learned was something southern, new every day was southern honored when we went to when i had that layover no. the main event we went to main event wrestling oh, which is okay, now my defunct. Bad, my bad. okay yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. main, I remember main event as well. Um yeah, yeah, I think I think they do a they do a tremendous job there. Um you know, it's it's a it always oh, really good talent, especially some of the best talent. I know they're definitely selective of who they bring in on their uh on their shows. So it's it's you know, I'm I'm honored to work there. You know, it's DDP's always there, you know, he's a good buddy of mine. Yeah. Um you know, they have Jake Roberts always there. 
Uh, so it's it's definitely a promotion that's that's watched in the South. You know, I know I know a lot of indie wrestling is very uh, you can call it um, you know Northeast Northeast elite bias uh, because a lot yeah. of especially IWTV a lot of Northeast promotions are the ones that get the most coverage. But I think it's great to be involved with ones like Southern Honor, uh, aforementioned you know Wrestling Revolver. Uh, there's some really good ones out west. I'd love to work work as well as like Prestige and West Coast Pro. Yeah, so like eventually get the opportunity to do that. Yeah, and it, uh, yeah, because we saw it. I was at Rumble. I know Jack. a lot of people say it, and it sounds really cliche, but uh, the Rumble Jack, yeah, that was that's a cool, it's a cool concept. I was happy to make my debut at Southern yeah. Honor in that match. Um, I think I think indie wrestling as a whole right now is in a really good spot. Um, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's uh, people always say, well, there used to be bigger crowds back in the day. I'm like, yeah, that's true, but I think also the talent has has gotten a little bit better. I think. You know, there's more options now for people with either streaming or they can watch they can watch wrestling AEW. Um, you know, there's other wrestling pros people want to spend their money on. Um, so that is it is one of the it's always that people are getting good reps, right? Because yeah. a lot of shitty indies, as we all know. Um, but you know, working in the right is that I want to get to the place where I want to work, you know, the good places. It's quality over quantity now. It's not yeah. like I, I don't want to have ten dumpy ass matches a month right just be like oh i worked 10 matches this month but i'd rather work four very good matches yeah. instead of having yeah. 10 dumpy ass matches that i'm like that didn't get better and it meant nothing yeah and you and you gotta like obviously think about you know longevity in your body and injuries yep. and stuff like that and taking bumps for for what you know like focusing yeah. on those big events and southern honor their presentation is amazing that's Incredible. what blew me away the first time i went there like the stage set up the sound systems. I mean, Fozzie's played there before, so like he has actually live bands that have performed yeah. at that at that at, at Action Church or whatever. And yeah, it's I don't know. It's, I think, it's awesome. I think they I think they 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 practice there a lot. I think some of I don't know how much. Yeah, but I think they they definitely practice there a ton. Um, but no, it's 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 a great you know. I, that's what it's about too. You know, it's it's really about you got to have good presentation nowadays. You know, with the age of social media, um, people are going to stop and look at something if it if it looks appealing. Right, yeah. you got a good setup. The lighting's good. The entrances look professional as shit. Yeah. Right, like it's like in you know everything. Everything looks good. The nice darker room and the, it, it's just really, really well done. You know, they get good yeah. crowds between two and four hundred people. Um, yeah. You know, the Rumble Jack. I think there was like about almost five hundred. Yeah, it was stacked. Yeah, to the yeah. brim. Yeah. So they they get it. They get they do some really. They they're doing a really good job. Um, and that's what I always say, you know, it's presentation. Sometimes I'm not saying they're a pig, but you put, you can put lipstick on a pig, right. And make it look good. People will, love, people yeah. will watch it. Um, it, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like moths to a flame, right? Yeah. Like, it's like, Oh, look at that. You know, like, look at, Oh, yeah. wow, wow. Shiny, something shiny. You know, we're all gold. Yeah. Especially people that like fans that are strictly WWE or AEW, like, you know, they, it's hard. They don't know. Like I'll talk to them. They don't know anything. They barely know about GCW, you know? And yeah, it's like, yeah. Or or any of those, so like that presentation, yeah, yeah, it, it goes, it goes a long way. That. Yeah, you know? it is funny because GCW is incredible with social media, right? Like they've done a yeah. tremendous job with that. Beyond has too, um, but you know, it's it's funny that it's funny that you say that because I was talking to I was talking to Wrecking Ball one day, and you know, he says like, you know what the two promotions in the in the country people know are? I'm like, what? Like AEW and WWE? He goes, no. WWE and not WWE. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, you're right. He's right though. He's right. Yeah. Like, every other wrestling is not W. If it's not WWE, it's just not WWE. They don't know what it is. Um, mm -hmm. so, but that's on us. You know, we gotta you got as indie wrestlers, you know, we have to make people pay attention. And that and it's not just the wrestling, like because uh, the majority of wrestling fans don't care about the wrestling. I'm sorry to say, I don't know if it's a, it's a shock to anyone. You wanna you wanna invest in yeah. characters and people, right? So like. I had a minute and 30 seconds on Rampage and I've had more people being like, oh, I don't really watch wrestling, but this guy's entertaining. Right. Yeah. Like it's, it's like, I, yeah. I'm invested in big trouble. Ben Bishop. I don't care if the match was a minute and 30 seconds. I found that Creed highlight video funny as hell. I found the video of him watching doing the reaction video with his wife on the couch. Funny. Yeah. I don't give a shit that it was a minute and 30 seconds. I always, the, the best, the best description that I like the best um, similarity that I make is like Joe Hendry. So you think like yeah. I, people hear the song, the song's catchy, the song's fun, the meme's fun. I bet you 95% of people never watched a Joe Hendry match and nothing against yeah. him. Nothing against him. It's just that 
it's it people are more interested in like the song and they want and they're like we love this guy this is so fun this music video is fun he makes fun videos he makes fun songs i don't give a shit about the wrestling he could be he could be the shits and he's not but he could be the shits for all that we matter but he's so yeah. fun he's so fun you know dan house same thing most of the people that love dan house probably never saw him wrestle and that's okay you know yeah. and they don't have they don't have to because he's so entertaining and so it's yeah. it's that's what people that's what the majority of people want they want to buy into rest to they, all my friends that watch wrestling back in the day. They don't remember the rocks matches or Austin's matches. They don't care. Yeah. They just, they remember Austin coming out, drinking beer, flipping the bird. They remember, they remember the rock and, you know, saying, you know, you smell what the rock is cooking. Know your role, shut your mouth. That's what they remember. Yeah. They, yeah. they remember Undertaker yeah. coming out or, you know, like in the, a, a, or having the, you know, the coffin matches or stuff like that. They remember the gimmicky stuff. Um, they don't, they're not going to be like, oh man, I remember that match between uh, Stone Cold and Bret Hart at WrestleMania. They don't, they don't remember that shit. <laughs> they yeah. don't remember, no, yeah. remember Stone Cold. Yeah. That's like the, the niche, like, like super, super fans that really, you know, go into like mm -hmm. every single match, like, you know, yeah, get into no. star ratings and all that stuff. And yeah. there's more casual yeah. fans than there are at the end of the day. That's what it is. There's more casual mm -hmm. fans that there are super niche fans and you need the super niche fans, you need the casual fans. Same thing with Star yeah. Wars. Any, any, any fandom, any like extreme fandom has that, right? It, yeah. it just that, and I think wrestling to an extent has a hard time figuring that out sometimes. Like WWE has figured it out, but I think a no. lot of wrestling has a hard time. Where look at any fandom, right? Like I, I, I love, I love the Patriots, right? I'm not a super fan of the Patriots. I'm not mm -hmm. gonna, I'm not gonna live and die by the Patriots. I'm gonna enjoy yeah. watching them, you know. And if they lose, that ah, that sucks. If they win, great, you know. My life's still gonna go on. You know, I think wrestling yeah. has thought like, no, every wrestling fan lives or dies by this shit. Like, no, yeah. that's like one to two percent of wrestling. Yeah, fans. it's a it's a small percentage, definitely. And yeah, I think like you know, promotions, but also wrestlers being able to you know be cognizant of that and placate to both. You know, which that's yeah. where we started out like with your social like the stuff you've been doing on social media and guy, and then also having having dope matches. It's like you mm -hmm. know getting yeah, both about, and yeah. pulling it together and you know yeah. for the record i do hope the patriots lose tonight as a jets fan right now <laughs> oh, yeah, you we know, got a, you know we got a jets funny? fan <laughs> speaking of not speaking of not being not being a diehard fan i forgot that they were even playing That's yeah, i, I wish i could forget the jets were playing tonight ah, you know uh, what yeah. i mean they, they're they're well unfortunately what happened with uh was it Hassan reddick when the, no one yeah knows really. yeah he's not signing but yeah, so that's a bummer, but I mean, yeah, I, the, Jets, the Jets are still a good team. I mean, I, you know, you, you can't yeah, count out just, Aaron Rodgers. You can't count. Yeah. As a Jets fan, I'm just always weary of uh, of course, what's coming yeah, around yeah. the corner. Of, <laughs> yeah. of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. but Awesome. Well, fellas, I really appreciate the time. I yeah. love just chatting it up and chopping it up with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, you know, things coming, things coming up in the pipeline. Um, I don't know when this is going to go out, so I might be dating myself, but of course, on Saturday. Um, if it comes out after that, I hope it went well. I hope it went yeah. well with Jeff Jarrett. Um, and you guys will be able to see what I got what I got planned there. It's gonna be really cool. Uh, October 11th against Cruel at Southern Honor. We went over went over that and um, a few other things coming up. I got a debut in Georgia in December. Another one viral pro wrestling in Augusta. Okay. So I got that coming up. Got, oh, Disruptor also. Uh, yeah, Disruptor. Yeah, Disruptor tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow night. Yeah. Disruptor's tomorrow night, the twentieth. Yep. And then also title on the line. Over, title on the line. Zicky Dice and um, Hunter James, and then we have. Um, disruptor on October 18th as well. So we have a few more disruptor shows. They're doing a tremendous job. Love working for those guys. Yeah. Um, and other, other things coming up. I don't know, man. I know I just, uh, I, I like to, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely, like I said, at the point where I'm taking a lot of things with quality over quantity, you know, you can, yeah. if you want to get booked every weekend, you can, but I, you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, Hey, I got other stuff going on and family life that, you know, so I'm yeah. not going to just go work some dumpy ass indie five hours away just to say I did that. Um, yeah. I'm excited where I'm at. You know, things are going well. I got some stuff in the pipe um, uh, in front of the scenes and behind the scenes. So we'll see what happens, you know, but I always say, you, know, you take it one day at a time and, you know, you keep it positive and you keep it trucking. And like I always say this all the time, keep the shades on because the sun never sets on a cool guy. Ain't that right? Yeah, exactly. absolutely. You got the that's why, I, on, that's why I'm always rocking them, man. That's it. That's it. That's it. You know, people are going to oh, hate yeah. you. They're going to hate on you. They're going to call you names. Yeah. They're going to shit on you, but you keep the shades on. Sun ain't never going to set. So it's, yeah. you know, just keep it cool. And that's what I, that's what I'm doing. Um, enjoy chopping it up with wrestling fans like yourself, but realistic, cool wrestling fans, you know, not the smart Mark people, you know, they don't, they don't, they don't yeah, like it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, so it was great chopping it up. I appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you. You know, the 50 minutes flew by. That was tremendous. Yeah. Um, and you know, 
keep doing what you guys are doing. You know, the Instagram's great. Um, keep it up. I always, I love content creators. I always tell people keep scratching that creative itch to so keep doing what you're doing. Thank you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll all speak soon. Yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. man. And Thank yeah, you. best of luck yeah. with those matches. Thank you. And uh, yep. Got it. We'll be, all right, we'll fellas. Be, we'll be rooting for you, man. Awesome. Thanks boys. Have a good one. Yep. Yeah, you, you too. too. And uh, we also wanted to plug his Instagram, which is Big Trouble BB. Yeah. And then one second, I'll find his Twitter. But and yeah, what's what's cool about the Southern yeah. Honor is it's uh, some some good storytelling because in the Rumble, Jack is the first time that him and Cruel came face to face, and I was popping because I'm fucking huge fans of both of them. So that's why it's going to be hard at Southern Honor. Um. You know what it's I mean? Good. It's it's a win win yeah. for me, but a lose lose at the same time because mm-hmm. those are those are my dogs right there and some of my faves and yeah it's it's I don't know that's why it's great being like all yeah. around fans of everything and no tribalism with us because mm-hmm. we get to watch talent you know on the come up and it's fucking mm-hmm. it's awesome dude. Yeah, his Twitter is also big trouble BB. What are you yeah, saying, AB? What are you gonna say? I was I was gonna say the same thing. I was gonna say what the Twitter right. was. Get on it next time, dude. I didn't even see you looking it Get up. up on it. Making it, it didn't even break <laughs> the, the goddamn content. professional. But uh, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm sure we'll put this episode out by tomorrow morning. I tomorrow guess night. tomorrow so, morning, tomorrow night. Yeah, to, tomorrow maybe at two p.m. Um. So yeah. So it's um, really we'll, up to the man named Jason. So but, yeah, the one they call Jason. And his, Manders. his back hurts right now, so I don't know. My back doing. hurts, dude. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's final yeah, but, um... it's final um but yeah I'm, I'm gonna be a disruptor tomorrow too so I'll, I'll get a i'll post some cool vids that we can probably that will yeah. pair with uh kind of some of what we were talking about in this interview and stuff and um yeah it was great having him on the pod and i feel like course, the, yeah. the perfect person to to be our first guest you know mm-hmm. we're, we're starting off with some fire so yeah Next week we got Stephen Baldwin. And... <laughs> That'd be sick. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Stephen he's, Baldwin. He's, he's very busy. Get Georgia lately. Legends, yeah. Yeah, dude, we really? need Ricky. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think that's a, yeah, I think that's a good approach. Honestly, like we're we're just gonna for as far as Beige Angle Pod, we're let's we're gonna hit territories. So we're starting in Georgia, lose some more I Georgia mean, wrestlers I mean, and uh, Jason. Next Saturday we'll be at a uh, Wrestle Pro in Rawway. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And I don't know about Jason, but two Saturdays from now, October fifth, I will be in Bethlehem for the LVAC Big Dan's retirement match. Yeah, I kind of got to go to that too. So maybe Jason. Yeah, that's will be big. There too. Who else that's is on big... that? You got Effie Big Dan and Catch. Yeah, those two. Yuta, and then like the LVAC regulars of them. Um, I can pull it Ultra up. Ultramantis Black. Yeah, he's. I think he might be wrestling Big Dan. Jeff Cannonball, Puff. Yep, yep. There's where is it? Let's see. Faye Jackson, yeah. Cheeseburger, Delirious, Avery Good, Erica Lee, uh, some others too. Yeah. But yeah, awesome card. I love the LVAC. Yeah. And it's what we always say, invasion angle, pod, we're everywhere, we're everything. And if there's a wrestling show that matters, we're gonna be there. All right. It's and, on the East Coast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, we've we've been, we've hey, been we'll to the West out. Coast. We went to the West yeah. Coast. I did it in our honor. I went out there to the Ukrainian Center a couple of years oh, yeah, in a row. So G C dub. Yeah. Did the WrestleMania last year. So that was cool. We're gonna have to make our way out to the Pacific Northwest for prestige and defy and stuff one day for sure. Yeah, I'll see you guys at Wrestle Dream. Uh, that's more like a wrestle nightmare dude because i'm gonna cry <laughs> the whole time why because uh, danielson's gonna lose man if he does dude yeah i'm gonna cry in front of everybody i'm gonna make sure i watch the, it in front of a bunch of people time, man. yeah and then run and get arrested for running down my block and my tidy whitey screaming and crying and that wouldn't be the first time either we forgot i got to a ask long tidy whitey rap sheet fuck yeah, we did forget to ask about the ice hole. <laughs> it's okay. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We're going to find ice hole. I don't know if he's hole. wrestling at ECPW. But yeah, I don't think he's on ECPW. So. Like, as far as Jersey, like, I know JCW, Invictus, which I would think, like, doing – yeah, I I would think, like, 
for sure, like GCW is like a, a solid fit for him and something that like, you know, Brett should be looking at and because GCW doesn't mm-hmm. have that many big guys really, right? Yeah. Who's their I don't who's their big guy right now? Their Who'd biggest their biggest dude is Shane Mercer, probably. And he's not Well, he's like not that tall giant. either. He's just he's just like a muscle man. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like there's a slot to fill there and Dude, I, I brought up and like I think like he would he would kill it NWA too, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because the world is a vampire. Wow, meant to drain. Notes. Yeah, meant to drain. Another amazing episode, guys. Maybe the best <laughs> one. Maybe one of the best. You know, it's up I there. I think they every single one's the best. It's close to the best because Jason didn't talk so much. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> He was starstruck, okay? All right, it's time to get invaded. Invasion angle. Invasion angle! Invasion Invasion angle. angle. Bet you love that sweet-ass podcast. I am John Cena, and I approve this message. Boobies.